guys, Stealth here, and welcome to episode 3 of the German campaign. Where, at the moment, I'm taking the V1 out for a spin. And, well, the V1 is the name giver of the class, if you will. It's got those massive 5.9 inch guns, a single torpedo launcher amidships, and I have to take down a torpedo boat. Well, I have to take down the transports, but the torpedo boat happens to be in the way. Now, the torpedo is out. Interestingly, they haven't spotted it yet. They have now, but of course this torpedo is going to do all sorts of other stuff rather than hit the target. I'm going to try and just ignore this little torpedo boat here, the Spiteful. At 33 knots, I'm just slightly faster than Spiteful and her range on the guns is a mere 5.5. Her torpedo range is even lower. And uh, with my guns, I have 2% chance to hit, so that's pretty good. I'm working on the assumption that the Spiteful was, in fact, defending the convoy and came from that general direction. So, let's just have that torpedo boat... <laughs> they lost sight of me. <laughs> they lost sight of me. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, I can just ignore this guy. Oh, there's a torpedo that just detonated. Um, I can just ignore this guy and we're going to go right for the convoy. Despite some scouting, it's proven to be very difficult to locate these transports. Uh, radar would be a fantastic device to have, but sadly, not yet invented. Spiteful has detected my torpedo. Wonder what this torpedo is going to do. These things have been known to just randomly veer off course. They've been known to just hit the target and then be a dud. This is actually looking good for a hit chance. Oh, and it blew up quite nice as well. Something I still find a bit weird about this game is how a torpedo boat, 723 tons of torpedo boat, gets hit by a 15-inch torpedo and doesn't just instantly disintegrate. These things survive. They take some flooding on the stern, but I believe the whole stern should be missing. So stuff like that, I think, is more gameplay purposes, game balance, if you will, rather than anything else. Anyway, I'm going to take down this torpedo boat, and we'll just have to rendezvous, if you will, with the transports at some other time. Mission of the V1 was a success, one victory point for the Brits, and a whole lot more for me. One thing I found to be very interesting, uh, it's a bit of a bug, I mean, it has to be a bug, right? I am allied with the French against the British. I don't understand. I really don't understand. Because I hate the French, the French hate me, I'm at war with the French. Here, minus a hundred. I'm at war with the French. They really should not be on my side. Uh, the French, however, should be on the side of the Brits. But they're not, for some reason or another. So this means that we have assistance as the V-13 raids a convoy considered or protected by the Andromeda, but I have support from the heavy cruiser Bruy and Bouclier destroyer from the French. So I think the French are really hating on the Brits for some reason. And other than a bug, I really don't have an explanation as to why this is happening. It does give him an interesting opportunity to have a look at the French ships. Uh, this thing is mostly funnel. 25 knots. It's not surprising that it's a lot of funnel. It's a 5.2 million heavy cruiser. Yeah. They must have put a lot into engine power. Because 25 knots is above that uh, magical boundary that we've seen before. So this is when ships get exponentially heavier. Uh, as they pass, I think, 24-2 is what we established in the previous episode. Anyway, that's the Bruy. 7.5 inch guns. Anti-torpedo blister. Pretty heavy barbette armor. Hydraulic steering. Steam basic engine. Huh. Interesting. Soft-capped HE shells. Gives them quite a lot of punch. And when it comes to propellant, they got brown powder... Enhanced reloading. That's nice. And I have the bouclier as well. Go there. Bouclier. This is an actual destroyer as opposed to my... I'm still not really sure what to call that. This destroyer, largely made out of funnels as well. 
5.4 inch guns, 4.2, 1.5 on the stern, so that's an, a downsized 2 incher. And uh, a lot of torpedo tubes, actually. One kilometer only. Right. I'm going to uh, essentially sacrifice the French ship and keep my own V-13 safe. I'm going to try and bypass this French heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry, uh, Brits heavy cruiser and just go for the convoy. Because that's the prize. That's the objective. If the V-13 can do some damage in the meanwhile, that is great. Bouclier. Here's your target. It's really weird having the French on my side when I'm in an active war against them. But okay, if this is what the game says the situation is, that's what the situation is. Um, yeah. Bouclier just launched a spread of torpedoes which are going all over the place. Hit. Okay, one dud, one actual damage. Quite good. Oh, there's your transport. Good. We're going to take down the transports first, because I think the Andromeda is not really going to go anywhere. Can we pen that? Eh, fairly well. Oh, 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 oh. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, you know what? If I really want to fuck up the French, I kind of do, I'm going to ram the Andromeda, and it might cause the loss of the Bouclier for them. But the game, on the larger scale, kind of considers the French to be... Ooh, my allies. So I'm not sure how the victory points are going to go. They're probably going to be a little weird on this one. Uh-oh. Port side torpedo launcher. That's a dud on the bouclier. The other one just exploded before it hit the bouclier. Living on the edge here. Living on the edge. Focus on the transports, please. I want to see what this gun can do against the transport. Because that's probably going to be very, very potent. It's a 5.9 inch gun. It supposedly does 88 damage, but this was one hit from a 4 inch. Sorry, from a 7.5, doing almost 4,300 damage against the transport. Yeah, that DD is fucked. Okay. Whoa! That was one hit from the V13. And that was another. Bouclier is dead. Brui, I need you to turn around. Musketeer and Despatch are going down soon. Ah, there's the last one. Turn, 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 turn. It's a turning circle. 700 meters. I've seen battleships with a smaller turning circle than that. Okay, we're not going to tore up these. That would be a waste of a good torpedo. I'm just going to gun these down. From smoke, because this guy is starting to shoot back. Musketeer. Currently refusing to flood. Come on. Boom. Is that enough? Yes. Mission accomplished. So that is that done. You're down. Let's slow you down to full speed. See so if we can get you some accuracy bonuses. What I'm much more interested in is getting an encounter with my battleships against the British battleships. I want to deliver a serious blow there. And I have been spreading out my battleships all over the North Sea, trying to get as many encounters as possible. But the British are proving to be fairly reluctant to engage. And other than the occasional transport, the occasional DD, I really haven't seen much. Sadly. I mean, the North Sea isn't that big. Not the Pacific, it's not the Atlantic. It shouldn't be that hard to find a bunch of battleships out there. Especially considering I have eight or nine looking for enemy battleships. Alongside with cruisers and everything else. Brui, what are you doing? Oh, you're getting torped. It's generally bad for your health. Oh, that one didn't go, and that one dotted. Nice. Very nice. Is this going to do anything? No. How expensive is that? Six million? Uh oh. That's problematic. Get over here. Are you done with those transports? You are. Good man. Speed back up the flank. 
That's actual torpedo impacts on the Bruy, and it does damage. Sadly, I don't have a stern torpedo launcher, so it's not going to be easy for me to torp them. You know what? I don't have to torp them. I just punch that heavy cruiser into the hospital. That's good enough for me. There. And the French <laughs> have just lost a ship. Or two. See, I am at war with the French. Why the fuck are they helping me? <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> nice bug, though. I like that. See, this. This is more like it. The British have found our task force. At least one of our task forces. We have the Nassau, Ostfriesland, Rhineland, and Scharnhorst. Now, it is important to note which types these are. I started sending these guys out in teams of two per class. So we have two fire starters. Those are the ones that start a whole lot of incendiary... Well, they fire a, lot, a whole lot of incendiary projectiles. And then we got Rhineland and Scharnhorst. These are the 13-inch single turrets, 13.9-inch. Guided by Admiral Hipper, the Saxony class, and the Friedrich Karl. Both of these have been upgraded. Uh, I saw that the Nassau has not yet completed her refit. The Rhinelands have completed their refit, so that's good. What are we facing? Five battleships. They are bringing fairly small caliber guns. 10.3 inch. It's not that scary. It's just that they got five battleships. So they're going to bring 20 guns to bear. Against, essentially, when it comes to big guns, my six 9-inchers. Oh, sorry, six 13.9-inchers. And then they have a whole lot of cruisers. Both heavies and lights, a couple of destroyers and torpedo boats. It looks like we're about to get busy. After a bit of maneuvering, it looks like the Admiral Hipper has been detected. There is a lot of enemy fire coming for that heavy cruiser, which is fairly heavily protected. But one of those projectiles is going to start to do damage sooner rather than later. And here, here we have one of our culprits. This is one of the light cruisers that just opened up. Over here we have another one of the lights, I think. Because I had a lot of light cruisers. What are these heavies? Six-inch guns. I don't know. Could go either way. Um, nine percent chance to hit. Already? That's really nice. Did you just engage two different targets? I think you did. I think Ostfriesland is trying to target two different units. That's good. Nassau and Ostfriesland are the fire starters. So we're gonna go for this target. And that was a 6-inch projectile that hit a destroyer. No, light cruiser. Oh, that makes these the heavy cruisers. Yeah, these are the heavy cruisers. Alright. Um, I'm going to burn down a couple of these ships, ideally quickly. Because I'm concerned about them coming in closer and starting torpedo attacks. The battleships are slightly farther behind. I'm going to make those the primary target of the big 13s, the 13.9 inches marked on Rhineland and Scharnhorst. This is going to get probably pretty hot for the British, as a lot of fires are about to be set by Nassau. Nassau and Ostfriesland switch fire. We got another guy coming in here, and they are currently not using any kind of cover. No smoke. That means it's a torpedo boat. The cruisers come back. Wow, that was a good hit. That was a 5-inch hit for 2,400 damage. And yeah, you're dead. Extensive fire. I believe the Nassau might have gotten its first casualty. Whoa! <laughs> These high explosive things are fantastic. That is the thruster. Um, I am a bit concerned about the Samer coming this close. Target that with everything we got. 1.4 clicks, but... 0.6... Point, yeah, 0.5 from Samer. I know that these carry a few torpedo tubes. Come on. Do some damage. Is that a battleship taking damage? Yes, it is. Excellent. They did not drop torps. 
Interesting. Okay, good. Very good. Come to port. Light cruiser coming in. And over here, we have the secondaries, the 8-inchers. They're going to take some shots at Samer. Whoa! Accurately as well. Fantastic. Somebody commented on a uh, video from a few days ago saying, these long barrels are a bit of a no-brainer. And I agree. If you have the opportunity to bring these long barrels, I think it's pretty much a given. You have to. Because they're just that good. They are just so good that it's very hard to ignore. Yeah, that's another one down. Albacore is down. Uh, Nassau. Ostfriesland. We got a Crusader coming in. Definitely on a crusade against my battleship, and I'm definitely not interested in taking visitors. That's going to be a problem. Come on. One good hit, and the whole thing ceases to exist. Please be a dud. Dud. Oh, then they're going to be the torpedo themselves. Ramming into the Ostfriesland and causing flooding and structural damage. Also at great cost to the crusader. Which is come... Oh, shit. Which is coming in with another torpedo attack. And be a dud. No. Not really. Crusader is done. And it seems that the structural integrity of the ship is fine. Alright, I want the heavy cruisers to come back. Over here we got Sharon Horse taking a bit more damage than I would like. We're going to target this with high explosive shells. We've eliminated quite a few of their smaller ships. Wow, that is remarkably poor. These guys have a lot of pen. Why am I bouncing off of the Undaunted? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me right now. These guys, do you got a lot of bulkheads? Yes, you do. Target the Undaunted, everybody go for that. Sharnhorst is down to 83% and has lost her conning tower. That's bad. There you go. This is bad for you, Undaunted. This is a ton of damage. It's half the heavy cruiser gone. Look at the amount of fire that this thing is on. This is the effect of all of the fire spamming from... Well, actually... The fire starters are not starting fires. The fire starters are using AP. Don't do that. Set fires. That's what you're great at. So continue to do that. Though, judging by the amount of damage that I'm outputting, I think AP might have been the better call here. Ooh, Sharnhorst is taking a lot of damage. And Rheinland is not able to deal a lot of damage with her main guns. Nice, that's more like it. Undaunted, dead. Uh, we're going to switch fire to the glory with both the Nassau and the Ostfriesland. Ostfriesland got torped, but is very well. Ship is perfectly fine. Uh, we got the Hipper and the Friedrich Karl. Which have vastly bigger guns when compared to those heavy cruisers. Charnhorst is still fighting for her life, having already done almost 10,000 points of damage. But... Oh boy. This is the first time this has happened to me. The Charnhorst has surrendered because she has taken too many casualties. If you take more than 45% of your crew in losses, then the ship surrenders. Whether that means the ship can be later reclaimed, I don't know. It's an interesting mechanic. We're going to see exactly how much that's going to fuck up my fleet. But it means that I might, for future designs, go for something that has spacious crew quarters. Of course, that does mean my crew pool is going to go down faster. Because I simply need a lot more crew to get all those stations manned. I'm trying to pepper the glory with a lot of fire damage and either overwhelm her fires, well, overwhelm her with fires, or... Just eliminate a lot of crew. Right now they've lost about 10%, but the Ostfriesland is not taking kindly to all the peppering that she's taking. 
So far, I have done 58,000 points in damage, and they have done 6,400. But that doesn't mean much. Because in the end, it's all about the actual amount of kills that you inflict. It is not about the amount of uh, points of damage that you do. Glory is down to 15% losses. This is coming quite well. Lost Friesland is down to 22%, though. That's not good. What are you shooting at? Natal. Over there. Switch fire to the King Alfred. Uh, yeah, and I think AP is my best bet here. 25% losses. Uh, Sharnhorst is just kind of sitting there. She's not sinking. She's just sitting there. Good damage on the torpedo boat. But I actually need... There goes the foam. Okay, that's the torpedo boat dead. I think their battleships haven't really done that much damage. 900, 500, 173. It's the heavy cruisers which are really carrying the team here. By the sheer number of them. The cruiser Blenheim is taking a massive amount of damage. Glory is down to 22% losses. What are you shooting? The battleship. Okay, good. You're catching on. Let's push in. I'm gonna make life on those battleships very difficult. The Ostfriesland can turn. I am not holding out a whole lot of hope for the Rhineland because she's down to 44% losses and will surrender in a minute or two. Yep, she just surrendered. Oh boy. Oh boy. Normally you could just outplay the AI. But that might not be the case here. Uh, Nassau, I want you to temporarily switch your attention here. Just eliminate the Blenheim so that they have another $6.2 million loss. Need to just inflict a whole bunch of, well, bleeding damage on them, if you will. Is they have a lot more ships. But what they do not have is the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought that I do have coming out eventually. Focus on this. Come on. We got 30% losses of crew. 25 and a half on the glory. Are they reduced ammo? Yeah, they got reduced shells. Makes sense. Free slant. Still targeting that, huh? Friesland's the one which is the second fire starter. Trying to limp away from this fight. Being very closely followed by the Colossus, the Victorious, the Cochrane. So I have some issues there. Why are you not dead, sir? 0.8% structural integrity. Take a hint and sink. Virtual integrity is dropping very, very, very slowly. There you go. Finally sinking. Okay. Okay. Who goes next? Glory? Because that thing has already taken quite a bit of crew damage. 27.5% in losses there. If I can capitalize on that, that'd be great. It's sad that my big guns are out of commission. Scharnhorst and Rhineland having surrendered after taking too many crew losses. This is starting to add up. They're down to 30% losses. The cruiser Minotaur is also coming in. Focus on Minotaur for the moment, because she's coming a bit closer. My heavy cruisers have taken some losses, but it's not concerning yet. It's not worrying. 67,000 damage versus 10,000 damage taken. The amount of ammunition that I have for AP is almost dry. So after that, we're definitely going full HE. But these heavy cruisers with their maximum bulkheads are not easy to kill. That's a problem. It's not that easy to burn them down. So I'm going to have to try and just overwhelm them with the heavy cruisers. and Maybe throw in a torpedo or two. Or just hit them really hard with a 9-inch high-explosive shell, maybe? 
causing serious loss of life on Minotaur? Not sure yet. Lost Friesland. There you are. Hey, buddy. Not enjoying your time in the Navy, are you? She's still peppering the glory, which is down to 33% losses. But her own losses are ramping up quickly at 33 and a half. So we are very... No, we've overtaken the amount of losses that the glory has taken. Interestingly, I have spare crew, if you will. My crew pool is not depleted. Theirs is. So I wonder if they're going to have to mothball ships. Because they don't have enough crew for said ships. That is going to be a very interesting after effect of battles like these, where you lose a ton of crew members. I have no idea how this is going to end up. Arguably, I'm winning the battle, considering the amount of damage that I've done and the ships that have sunk. But if I lose a bunch of battleships here, then that's going to be very painful. I, yeah, I'm still sticking to my choice of going for the kill on the cruisers. Because the battleships, they really aren't that dangerous. 850 damage on Monarch, 791 on the Black Prince, and she's close. Minotaur, 400. King Alfred, 500. Looks like Ostfriesland is doing the last bit of damage. In form of heavy flooding on Cochrane. Turn. She ran out of AP a while ago. Oof. Now listen here, right? You're supposed to be the fire starter, not the one that is just burning. Okay? I am taking a ton of damage from fire damage. Let's see if we can eliminate the Malampus here. Light cruiser worth 2.8 2 million. Loads and loads of systems are starting to get destroyed and damaged. 42.8, 43. 43.3. Malampus, flash fire. Second flash fire. Third. Uh oh. No, that won't hit. Fourth. How are you not dead? 40% lost. 42. 43. How are you not dead? Dead. Okay. She surrendered. And now Oskristland has surrendered as well. Nice. That means that Nassau is effectively the last battleship that I have. And the way that this is going... Jeez, you're still having flash fires. The whole ship's cooking off. Oh, there's another one. Oh, look at that. That's the turret just taking off. Never seen that. Whee! <laughs> nice. Look at that turret go. Wow. Volatile. I remember way back in the day, flash fires weren't a thing. And another one. Flash fires were the thing. Um, I don't know, a year ago or something? They just didn't exist yet. Folks, Black Prince, we'll take care of the Minotaur using the heavy cruisers. Yeah, now you're catching on. Uh, Minotaur is down to 41.9... No, 41.2% losses. I might be able to make her surrender. King Alfred is taking 10%. Black Prince is taking 7%. We're flinging as much high explosive at the Black Prince as possible. No, sorry, we're still firing AP. Ah, uh, it's the Ostfriesland. They were out of AP. This guy, not so much. Not yet. So, the AP racking up the damage and the floodings might eliminate the Black Prince. Minotaur down to minus 42% lost crew. Very good, very good. I'm really going to need those Dreadnoughts getting pushed into service quickly, because at this rate, I won't have any battleships left. Come on. 
Yes, excellent damage there, Nassau. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. These guys are taking a ton of damage. There we go. Overpen, flooding. 16% crew lost. Nassau has done 14,000 damage. Boom! Full pen. I think this ship might flood. She has the potential to. Alfred slowly catching up. Here's the Hipper and the Friedrich Karl coming back. Whoa. Hipper doing 5.8k? Six and a half for the Friedrich. I think that's mostly the 8-inch, is it not? Yeah. Look at that. The 8-inch. But surprisingly, a close second are the 4-inch guns. I think that they might have been instrumental in eliminating some of the smaller ships. Folks, the Black Prince. We're going to take this guy down. 27.8, 42.8, 9.4. Nassau turned to port. We're going to eliminate these isolated heavy cruisers. And then maybe Natal. If she comes too close. The cruisers are mine doing a lot of work. There you go. Blood it out. She's gone. Okay. Mm, considering range, I'd say King Alfred next. I agree with the threat assessment that my heavy cruisers have made. Look at him go. Bruised and battered. Still very much fighting, although one of my turrets has been destroyed. Secondaries, that is. So far... Quite happy with how the battle is developing. Uh, Hipper, you're coming up very close to the Minotaur. Let's eliminate that. Push them into surrendering. They're almost at the 45% mark. We don't just flat out eliminate the ship. 43. Come on. What are you doing, Nassau? Turn hard to port. Bring as many guns to bear as possible. Minotaur down to 43 and a half. Ricochet, ricochet, ricochet. Maybe stop firing AP then. Because I think we cannot overmatch their bow. Not like that. How much bow armor you got? Four bell, 2.1 inch. Heavily sloped. Ricochet angle is definitely not in my favor. Okay. Nice. King Alfred starting to flood. Minotaur past the 44% mark. 44.4. More flooding on the King Alfred. 44.7. Problem is, I am starting to run very close to the enemy battleships. And while my battleships might be able to take the damage, my heavy cruisers probably cannot. Surrender, damn it. There you go. Okay, so that's another one down. How are you doing, Fred? Hmm. There's the Victorious. Lovely. They still carry 141 AP shells, and that's just one of their battleships. It's concerning. It is really quite concerning. As good as my heavy cruisers are, I don't believe they can tank the shells from multiple battleships. Or do so much damage that they will burn them down. I doubt it. Victoria's at a 9% crew loss. It's not that bad. Colossus is perfectly fine. Irresistible's perfectly fine, not having taken a single hit. Let's at least bunch the ships back up. Concentrator firepower. Natal is coming in with the torpedoes. She too is already taking quite a bit of damage, but with her angled bow, not that much. Things can do 20 knots. My heavy cruiser is faster, my battleship is not. 
No, actually, my battleship is. That is under ideal circumstances, though. These are not, because the battleship is down to half structural integrity, so I cannot max out my speed. Hmm. Sink all enemy ships. I've already done 60% of that. Wow. That's a lot better than I'd expected. Turn. After a long and bloody battle, I have a few ships left. I got the Friedrich Karl, I have the Hipper, and I have the NASA. And I'm trying to save these two at the expense of the Friedrich Karl. Friedrich has been very badly damaged, has lost an engine, and is trying to limp more and more. She could do 14 knots. She's trying to do a desperate last stand against Heavy Cruiser Natal. And hopefully... By distracting the enemy battleship column, she can just give the other two ships, which have a far better chance of escaping, actually that window to escape. Friedrich now also getting torpedoed by the Natal. The very desperate last stand with a ship that is badly in need of assistance. Sadly, I don't have any assistance to give. So I'm fresh out of ships. Also, um, my battleship, the Nassau, is now, um, well, it has less firepower than a heavy cruiser because my 9 inches have run dry. She has fired 1,700 shots. Not all of those, of course, were 9-inch guns, but, well, just the whole 9-inch mag is dry. Nothing left. Friedrich and Natal locked in... Mortal Kombat here. Uh, neither party can really move anywhere. Problem is, they have some really big friends. I do not. Interestingly, these British ships are running low on their main guns as well. Their 10.3 inch guns are almost dry, but the 7 and 5 inches are not, and they still have torpedoes to boot. I'm disregarding the 3.4 inch because I don't find those to be particularly threatening. So... During a prolonged engagement, my better accuracy and their lack of ammunition might swing the battle in my favor. Might just be enough. Friedrich currently at 41.2% losses. Natal not too far behind. And something else that I noticed about these ships. Spacious quarters. They get 693 crew members. I have 972. Because my ship is bigger, I think. Yeah, 10% more beam and 15% more draft. This is 1% more beam and 3.5% more draft. It does mean that the British still need more crew to help those ships recover. Yeah, this is the end of the fleet. This is the end of the road. She's badly flooded. Oh, she's still doing damage. There she goes. Sinking. Dud torpedo. <laughs> Well, at least we got that going for us, which is nice. Um, at this point, I believe I have completely lost contact. We're going to end the battle and see what the result is. The British won this one. They gained 11,394 victory points. They have lost 12 of their ships, but they sunk 4 of mine. Apparently, the battleships which surrendered are considered sunk. Now, this is something I'm going to have to get used to, because apparently losing that much crew considers the ship lost. It's not like you can just get it back after the battle. The ship is just gone. Which means that I lost 4,000 sailors, but they lost 5,300. They have lost a bunch of heavy cruisers and all of their smaller ships, leaving just a heavy cruiser or three. One of those, I believe, is the best condition, and all the battleships are doing quite all right. So that was not a good first large encounter with the British. But I believe that I can recover. Because what the British don't know is that I'm building dreadnoughts. Those dreadnoughts will still take a year to complete. So I'm still going to be using the older battleships for a while. And uh, repairing what I have left. Let me just pull the rest of the battleships together. See, I'm not even sure where their battleships came from. I don't see any of them. 
That's weird. I still got seven battleships here, but of course the Brits don't engage that. Oh no. Let's park that over here right in the channel. All right. Um, off screen, I'm going to be doing a couple of convoy missions. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. No, this is going to be the next episode. Task Force attacks convoy. Holy moly. It's eight transports, but apparently they're transporting the, I don't know, the crown of the queen. Because look at the amount of escorts that they got. It's essentially the entire division of destroyers, a bunch of heavies, and some lights. Which, for all my battleships, is going to be a walk in the park. So, join me next time, and we're going to be taking down a whole bunch more of the British ships. And we'll see you guys then.